Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rant. Power to come on now, the podcast. I am your host, Rudy Rodriguez Showmont. As you can see, I got football in the background. I just finished watching the WNBA Finals Game 2. Yes, I watched it. We'll be talking about that game later tonight, live, myself and Ben Daniel. Remember, we practice facts over feelings here. Also, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and also jump on over to our other page at Rudy's Rant on YouTube and subscribe over there. We thank you for your continued support of our channels. Let's jump on in on the topic at hand. It's football IQ. It's terrible. You watch these games and you sit here and you ask yourself, and I'm talking about college football, NFL football too, but college football specifically. So yesterday, Alabama is playing South Carolina in a nip and tuck game. First off, Alabama, since that first half against Georgia has been utterly terrible. They have been bad. They lose to Vanderbilt. They are in a game against South Carolina where they're up two scores. And next thing you know, you blink and South Carolina's up 19-14 with a chance to make it. I think it was that one. They had a chance to make it 22 to 14 and miss a miss a field goal. Or were they already was it already 20 to 19? Let me check. I like let me let me confirm for you before I go there. Because I was, I watched the game, but you know, you don't remember exactly what happened at every point, but yes, it's 1914. Um, 1914 after they intercept the pass and then they fumble the ball immediately and Alabama gets it back. Sorry. Yes. So Alabama scores, makes it 20 to 19. And then South Carolina misses a field goal. 40. What was it? Like a 40 something yard field goal. 51 yard field goal. Misses the 51 yard field goal that would have made it 22 to 20 instead of still 20 to 19. And then um, Alabama has the ball with six minutes to go and they're running clock. And obviously, in the situation here, you're talking about you, you can either run the clock out or what, what can you do? But you want to get first downs. They get first downs and they're sitting on a 10 with two minutes to go. And you have a situation in which you have to remember and understand situations of a game. That also matters because you're coming off of the two minute, the two minute warning now, which we now have in college football. And you should be letting your players know as coaches, this is a situation and this is what you do in that situation. Kalen DeBoer has loosened the strings a little bit when it comes to Alabama football. Nick Saban was very regimented, very uh, 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 a dictator of sorts. But you know what? You notice the two winningest coaches in football, in the NFL, and in college, for the most part, are dictator-like coaches. Bill Belichick with the Patriots and Nick Saban with, the, with Alabama. So it works. Disciplinarians work. The coach, the player coach, it might work for a little bit, but if you don't have the talent, it doesn't always it doesn't work forever. See, Alabama's winning championship has won championships when they haven't had the best talent. They've been in Georgia a few times when they clearly didn't have better talent, but they had better coaching. Get more disciplined players. So this is what happens. Third down and 10 from SC's 34. Obviously, in the situation, SC's trying to hold them to at least a field, hold them to a field goal attempt. But this is what happens. And I will show you what happened. As you can see, it's 2019. Third and 10, two minutes to go. South Carolina has no timeouts. So what does that mean? That means if you get a first down, the game is over. Over. So what, here's what happens. Third down and 10. Milro back to pass. Wants more than 10. Right there. Psychologically. You're a college player, any player. Psychologically, 
You always want to score. But you have to understand the situation. And don't tell me about his momentum. I don't want to hear it. You have to understand situation. You're up one. The best case scenario, you're now up eight. But you've now... Here, go down. Hit the ground. Hit the ground. Put your knee down right there. Game's over. Game's over. They have no timeouts left. You can now deal the ball out. And you win 20 to 19. Game's done. Instead, and he's got it. Touchdown. He scores. And here's what's crazy. At no point did you listen to the commentators in this situation call this out. At no point did they call this out. At no point did they say, yeah, you might have wanted to put your knee down and not scored there. Because now what you've given is South Carolina a chance to come back and tie this game. They have an opportunity now to tie the game. And that's nearly what happened because of bad football IQ. Alabama nearly lost the game or nearly tied it, nearly had a game going to overtime to potentially lose a game on their home field, no less, because their wide receiver is not understanding the situation. And maybe coach failed to educate and let him know, bro, you gotta you gotta go you gotta hit the ground. We'll kneel, we'll kneel the game out. Game's over. So while I'm not gonna show you the timeout, the the the, the play that actually uh let me let me show it to you. Hold on a second. So now you got South Carolina is driving the ball down. It's 50. There's 50 seconds to go at the Alabama 31. And you get this. 31 yards away. Only an eight-point game. South Carolina. Here's the strike they want. Touchdown. Touchdown. So now you have a 27-25 game and a chance to tie it. Now I will tell you, they did not get the two-point conversion. So that's a touchdown. They reviewed it. They said it was not a touchdown at first, but when they actually looked at it, finally they saw, yeah, it's a touchdown, right? So they go for two. They don't get the two. But, of course, it's not over that fast. <laughs> it's, not that, it's not that fast. It's not over that quickly because, of course, you, you have uh, more. There's more. And then you get this, the onside kick. The only possible way, the only possible way, for South Carolina to have a chance still is this. And now it's more dangerous because now a field goal beats you, right? And I thought the way South Carolina handled this situation here wasn't the, wasn't the greatest when they got the ball back. But, of course, you get this. It's scenario. Here it is. It's a wobbler. That's just brutal right there. That's brutal. Brutal. Multiple got, guys yes, touching the ball. Another one's losing the ball. South Carolina's got it. South Brother, you can't be. like that. That's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. So they have the ball now, and this is the final play of the game. At this point, there was a play in between in which um, there was a play in between in which the line the ball hit, was batted and the lineman caught it for South Carolina rather than just knocking it to the ground because it, it it ran off more clock. Because right here, if you look at where they're they're at, I mean, even 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 in this situation, this is third down and eight. If you get a first down. You can stop the clock. You don't have timeouts, but the clock's going to stop on, on the, the chains moving. You get your butt to the line because they're blitzing. You can see that you have well, yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, eight guys coming. Eight. I, I, you know, you, you got eight dudes coming, and I'm sitting here looking at this tight end. This tight end should be going right up the middle. The tight end on the bottom of the screen should be going right up the middle to that first down marker right inside the 40-yard line. He could get that ball down to the 35. Just the way they're positioned, because you got three DBs on those top three receivers. You have everyone coming full house. That tight end should be releasing right up the middle. So if you do that, you have a wide open guy. You have a first down. 
and you're kicking a field goal for a chance to win the game. Because you spike the ball, you put you bring your field goal unit on there. But this is how the game ends. Sellers. See? I don't know why this tight end stayed in so long. I don't know why he stayed is in. Is so there some he, he just blocked. He just was a blocker. So like that, like that pass right there, no chance. It's overthrown. He's playing center field. Interception. Game over. At the end of the day, point being, football IQ is such a big thing, and football IQ nearly lost Alabama this game. I'm going to tell you this right now. Alabama's not as good as you think. Yeah, they got that great win over Georgia, a game they damn near gave away because of bad football IQ in that game as well. And I'm going to be honest with you, though, at the end of the day, you think there's a difference between Nick Saban and these other coaches? There's absolutely a difference. Nick Saban is the greatest coach in college football history for a reason, and it's showing every week with Alabama. The Alabama, Alabama has not had some easy road to 5-1 and one or 6-1 and one or whatever, whatever they are right now. They, they played a, an awful game versus South, South Florida at home. This is another – and they, they, they escaped in the last five minutes, really, because they made it look a lot worse than it really was. You have this game, which is at home. You know, you have the game against Georgia at home where you're up big early and you blow the lead completely. And then you have the game at Vanderbilt, a team they hadn't lost to in – I mean, it was a 23 straight times, I think it was, I saw. And they had – and then in Nick Saban's entire career, Vanderbilt only scored 13 points. But in the first half of that game, he had, he had then he had 23. So you have to look at all these different things. But football IQ is low. And this is an example of it, a really bad example of it. I mean, it's a really good example of why it's so low. But, again, these players don't understand situations. And that's why football is hard to watch times because you're sitting here watching this stuff. You're like, what are they doing? But, hey, they escaped. They survived. I don't think Bama's going anywhere in terms of playoff positioning. They're going to end up in the playoff because they're Alabama. I mean, they'll probably lose one more game in the regular season. I think we've seen now that Tennessee is not as good as you think they are. Ole Miss isn't going anywhere. Ole Miss won't even make the playoff. Um, you're looking at Texas, Georgia. Bama, and maybe fringe Tennessee. Tennessee is gonna, is gonna Tennessee will get beat again. So we'll see if they get four from the SEC. I know they want to push for five because they want to make this a, make this an SEC tournament. But the SEC is not as great as people think. They can be great, and they can also look like this. Leave your comments. Let me know what your th let me know what your thoughts are. Love to hear your feedback on this. Is football IQ at a low at a, at a low? Is there a difference between Nick Saban and Kalen DeBoer? Are you seeing it? Are you seeing what I'm seeing or not? Let me know your thoughts. And also run over to Rudy's Rant. Subscribe there. And uh, pound that like button here. And keep supporting us. We really appreciate you. Come on now.